O mothers, sisters, and daughters, the honour of the world comes from you. Countries' populations and the greatness of nations come from you. Princesses in homes and the progenitors of towns, you are of sorrowful hearts and inspiration, and in pain the consolation. With you the homeless find a home, without you no desert can be sown. At home or in a foreign land, the delight of life at hand comes from you. You are the picture of piety, the counsellor of chastity, of religion a guarantee. Protection of faith comes from you. Your temperament is shy, loving and true. Your nature content and patient too. The expression of humanity comes from you. There lived virtuous men who knew not when their virtue was lost. O oh, virtuous ones of the world, whatever virtue now costs, it comes from you. Companions of your husbands and comforters of your sons, without you all homes are deserted. The blessing of an entire home comes from you. You give care to the sick and shelter to the resourceless. You are wealth to the poor, relief for those in distress comes from you. When you arrive in the world, you oft unwanted come, but then by your charms you please everyone at home. Still though a power in your parents' home, you remain a servant from your childhood on. To your parents' orders, you dance like a puppet on a string, you sympathise with father and heed mother in every little thing. You're cooking, sewing, mending, all day, every day. You never have a moment free to while the time away. You're the one who wakes at the night when others are asleep to care for little siblings who are crying in their sleep. And when you reach your in-law's house, you find another situation. As if at bound you landed in a distant alien nation, there you must endeavour lest others be distressed to never displeasure, you must always do your best. Nor disturb his father lest his mother and his sister find you too great a bother. And if it should befall that they are nasty one and all, you should not frown, keep your annoyance down, Lay aside your troubles, grin and bear it, swallow your anger as if bile were sherbet. After marriage, everyone wants children for you, but once the Creator obliges, what are you to do? You're the one quarantined, the one who endures pain. You taste death in order for wealth to gain. In your parents' home and at your in-laws too, everyone rejoices but the burden's on you. Forget about eating or dressing or outings in town. The children's welfare must now precede your own. Still, you think nothing of it as long as they're well. But if one becomes ill, then it is hell. You spend days at hard labour and nights without rest. Each moment seems an hour and every hour a year's test. Each year in the service of children equals ten years of your life. No one knows its value who has not endured that strife. Men know of the importance of your task in no wise. Only another who has given birth can sympathise. In fact, to raise children is beyond the powers of men, and so, O oh, suffering ones, this duty falls on you again. If you had not been created, the fleet could not reach the port. If this burden fell on men, mutiny would cut the voyage short. Had mothers not looked after the children of the race, the world, lacking humans, would be an empty place. How could these sorry lumps of flesh find nourishment they need without a devoted mother's breast to satisfy their greed? Whence would come reformers of society and faith whose words dispelled the darkness and brought light of truth? And they who found the laws of science, the fruits of whose research revealed to men the secrets held by the sky and earth? And world-conquering heroes like Alexander the Greek who made others bend to their will like rushes in a creek of the kings of Persia, Khusro was the pride, whose justice became legend talked of far and wide. Are not all these the fruits of those fragile flowers who nourished them with their life's blood for so many hours? 
whether purist Sufis or those who know the Lord, whether prophets, saints or devotees, or those who spread the word, whoever by the grace of God brought peace into the world, all have sat on mother's knees, grown as her watch and ward. Alas, the world repays your virtue by oppression. Deprived of rights, in truth you endure untold transgression. Often men were ready for your assassination. You were scratched by the stroke of a pen from the page of imagination. For years you were buried alive in the sod. You had no defender other than God. Living, you were obliged to burn on your dead husband's pyre while the world watched the spectacle without ire. Married before you knew the meaning of the word, bound for a lifetime by the straightened cord, married by your parents without any say, just as a criminal is locked away. As long as this good fortune lasts, you will live twixt hope and dread, but widowed, you can know no peace until you too are dead. Opinion weighs you down with ever harder trials, and all your faithfulness meets nothing but denials. You get no recompense for all your patience here, although you did the work that even angels fear. In this veil of sorrows for all you've had to face, you should be remembered as the pride of the human race. Those who are hard-hearted and who would see you burn, their cruelty is world famous, but where are you to turn? You don't even get reassurance amongst your loved ones, whether they be husbands or fathers, brothers, sons. Even he who shares your home, whose affections you have won, he too withholds his trust, O oh, unfortunate one. Even should a man of honour love you your whole life through, still good or bad, men all agree that this one thing is true. As long as you are living, of knowledge you'll be deprived. You'll quit this world uninstructed as when you arrived. In this way you'll stay passive and hidden out of sight. Neither the world knows you, nor will you see the light. That knowledge of which for men holds the elixir of life is considered in your case as deadly as a knife. But the hour of justice approaches, the day of reckoning is near. The world must answer to the charges of stealing your rights so dear. That time is gone forever, when you found no comrades anywhere when the heavens looked the other way and even the earth was bare, when all the learned doctors trembled in fear, lest upon you fall the shadow of knowledge from somewhere, lest they said with education the distinction not remain, how improper it would be for you to become just like a man. Indeed, refrains belittling you are sung to such an extent that even you are certain of the truth of such contempt. You've been deprived of knowledge for such a long, long time that you believe yourself unworthy of anything so fine. For barbarism to increase, the world must know such degradation as you have had to bear within, you know that humiliation. Not a single day have men thought you worthy of conversation. Call you ladies, though they may, they treat you as bond maidens. At last your forbearance has touched the hearts of those who care. How true it is that silence will receive its homage fair. The time has come to awaken those overcome by sleep. Upon your patient suffering the waters of mercy run deep. After so long, the time is here for obtaining your birthright. Justice veiled has shown herself fleetingly in the light. But though obstacles remain facing your assistance, there is no solution but must overcome resistance. The vehicle of truth often lurches down the street, but when victory is near, truth always is more fleet. O oh, strength of the hopeless, of the voiceless speech, the adventure of education is now within your reach. Those communities which before you face the situation have, through perseverance, reached their destination. 
A molehill becomes a mountain to cross without firm determination, but a mountain seems a mustard seed once you have determination. It is a signal victory that justice is your protection. Whoever denies that truth is bound to face dejection. Only partisans of justice will reach their destination.